and Dave. And together, with our dogs Belle and Hudson, we're exploring the world in our escape travel trailer. In the winter of 2023, we traveled from Ontario to Texas to pick up a 17-foot Casita trailer and spent over a month on the road. We liked it so much that by the fall of 2023, we upgraded to a 19-foot escape trailer so that I had space to work from the road. We haven't looked back since. Come see where we go next. Going into this summer, we hadn't anticipated visiting this many provincial parks across Ontario, but today Ferris Provincial Park will be probably our eighth or ninth park of the summer. Every park we've been to has had its own unique features, and this has really made us appreciate our home province that much more. If you count up all of our trips throughout Canada and the US this year, we've probably visited between 35 and 40 different campgrounds, which include private parks, KOAs, state parks, and provincial parks. You might be wondering why we don't just pick our favorite campground and keep going back there. The truth is, we like the adventure. We like to see different things and have new experiences. So although it would be simpler to just keep going back to the same place, this is what trailer travel is all about for us. Unfortunately, our stay at Ferris Park was only one night. Having gotten here fairly late in the evening, we had planned to leave our exploring to the next day. But we woke up to rain. So we used this opportunity to have a slow, relaxing start to our morning. So today we're at Ferris Provincial Park and it's still the morning here. I'm just out bringing the dogs for their morning walk. It's been rainy most of the morning but it looks like it's starting to clear up now and get sunny. This is uh, a short stay because we got here fairly late last night after I finished work and we're leaving today to go to Trestle Brewing but we're gonna take some time this morning and check a few things out. I'm actually hoping to go and see a suspension bridge nearby. That's apparently a local attraction. So see how that is, but uh, finish my walk with the dogs here and then uh, we'll get the day started. So as we walk through the park this morning, I'll share a few pros and cons of this park that I've noticed in our short time here. Um, first of all, one of the pros is that the campsites are all pretty private and they're all large. However, we have noticed that a lot of them are uneven, um, including quite a bit of hills and slopes on many of them. So if you're coming with the trailer, Got to be cautious about that. We did look at the sites online before we came. There's photos of the sites, but it's a bit hard to tell if there's a hill from some of those photos. So you can see some behind me here. One of those, it doesn't look like there's much of a slope, but there actually is quite a bit. Makes leveling your trailer a little bit more challenging. Another thing about this campground, it's divided up into two sections. One is called Bedrock and one is called Valley View. We're camping in Bedrock. And there's no shower facilities in Bedrock, which is not really a big deal, but we did hike up to the Valley View portion of the campground last night. We thought it would be a short walk. Ended up being a little bit longer than expected. And yeah, just one single shower for the whole campground. There's only about 132 campsites here. So probably not generally a problem, but we're also here at the low time of the year meaning that most of the campsites that you see around me 
are all empty right now. And then just one final thing to comment on is that the cell phone signal is quite weak throughout the park. So I certainly would not want to be here on a day that I need to work. And if cell phone signal is really important to you, it's pretty weak, so maybe not a place that you'd want to stay. One other thing I'll mention, and we found this about most provincial parks in Ontario, is that sites that do have power generally have access to power quite a distance from where, you, where your trailer would be parked. So that means you really have to make sure that you have a long power cord. This particular campsite, we actually had to borrow a third power cord from Dave's dad in order to reach the receptacle. So. Another thing to keep in mind, we probably could have just boondocked overnight anyway, but it was warm last night and we wanted to turn on the air conditioning. So we ended up uh, being able to plug in. It's my first time this morning really walking through this park since we got here fairly late last night. I'm getting a first chance to check out all of the campsites. Some unique ones. Pretty much what I would expect from a, a provincial park in Ontario. And of course, Hudson and Belle are quite happy to be out for their morning walk. This is definitely part of the routine whenever we're at any kind of park, they get their morning walk and then we'll go back and feed them. And then they'll probably have a nap. They like to have a morning nap. So in Ontario, most of our provincial parks are located on a lake. In this case, um, there's no lake around, but there is a river. And I'm actually curious to see if I can find the river this morning. Looks like what I did find is some sort of kids park. Interesting. <clears throat> These stone walls are located throughout the park as well. Looks like they have some sort of historical significance. All right, so this trail seems to be in the direction of the river. So we'll follow along and see if we can at least get a view of the river. I'm always curious about the water bodies that surround any of the parks that we go to. Here's the problem though. There are many forks in the road along this trail. So, probably should have looked at the map ahead of time instead of wandering around aimlessly trying to find the river. But no matter what, the dogs are still happy. They get to explore and that's all that really matters. Aha, looks like I finally found the river in the distance. Let's get a closer look. Let's see what it's all about. Come on guys, come on Bilbo. So it looks like what we found is the boat launch. And I'm actually kind of surprised to see directly across the river, looks like a commercial or industrial area of the nearby town. To be honest, I don't even know what the nearby town is, but we'll be checking that out later this morning. But yeah, clearly we're actually quite close to civilization here. a nice river system. Very swimmable. Got some kayaks over there. I'm sure that would be fun to take out for a ride.
But I think it's time to head back to the trailer, see if Dave is ready to go, and we'll go check out the suspension bridge. Here we are, we made it to the suspension bridge. You probably don't want to be afraid of heights going on here, because you can see right through it. So it took us about 20 minutes to walk here from the park and it was definitely worth it. If you're at Ferris Park, come and check out this suspension bridge as long as you're not afraid of heights. Straight down to the water. Gorge Suspension Bridge. What a cool bridge. How nice are these fall trees and fall colors? Couldn't be traveling at a nicer time of year. If you enjoyed this video, please consider hitting that like button. Or, even better, subscribe to our channel. It really does help us reach a wider audience. And don't forget to come back tomorrow to see where we go next.